Sure. So welcome, Wade. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. So you are the CEO of Two College Brothers Moving Company? Correct. Right? Yeah. Two College Brothers Moving and Storage. Moving and Storage. And can you tell us the backstory of that? Like, how, how did you come up with the name Two College Brothers? And does it have a meaning behind it, I'm assuming? Yeah, no. So, um, so I was uh, graduating high school in 2008, <clears throat> and I was looking for a job. Um, there wasn't a lot of uh, part-time employment uh, where I'm originally from uh, down in the Sarasota area uh, that was looking to hire somebody with very little work experience that was only looking for part-time work in the summertime. Um, down there, it's really kind of a seasonal area. A lot of snowbirds come down in the, the winter, but summertime, the population kind of shrinks a little bit. Um, so I couldn't, I was having a lot of trouble. Uh, my dad was basically forcing me to find something and he was going to find something for me if I didn't uh, start making some money. So, um, you know, the options that he laid out did not sound fun at all. So I, I just started to um, advertise my myself uh, on Craigslist, actually, as a college student athlete that um, was down for any kind of general labor. I was playing baseball uh, at the time. I was getting ready to uh, move up to North Carolina to play at a small school up there. And uh, I was in pretty good shape. So I just kind of wanted to do something where I was active. So I, I posted those ads online, uh, started getting all kinds of different crazy calls to, I mean, it was Craigslist in 2008. So you can imagine. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I was helping out handymen, holding the bucket of bolts. I was working with a carpet cleaner, uh, just holding the hose while he cleaned carpets. I was working with um, uh, just all kinds of random industries. And, uh, but I also started getting a lot of calls to help load and unload U-Haul trucks. So, uh, and that was actually what I enjoyed doing the most out of, out of all of it. I was cutting grass and stuff like that too. But, um, <clears throat> I, I would, you know, go out for the day and kind of set my own schedule. People would call me just for the, the cheap labor. It was during the recession. So people were looking to save money. Uh, and I was out there just, um, just, you know, getting a good workout in people would usually buy me lunch. They tip me, they, you know, I charged whatever I wanted to charge and, um, and people seem to be really happy with the idea of hiring a college student. So, um, baseball career fizzled out, uh, after, after that first year, I ended up transferring to the university of Florida, uh, played on like the club team and stuff. So I stayed in pretty good shape, but, um, uh, but still needed to make some money and the, the job market was still a little tight. So, um, you know, started doing the same thing up there. I was helping people load and unload U-Haul trucks. Uh, if I needed a, a second person, I'd bring a friend out there. Uh, my brother later got into the university of Florida and he would help out with a lot of the same stuff. Um, and I, you know, kind of got the wheels turning a little bit to, um, to see if I could turn this into a real business. So not knowing anything about business, uh, I just decided to, to go for it. And I got a, a license with the city of Gainesville. Um, and it, it turns out there's a lot more involved in just doing that. So, uh, you know, I didn't have any insurance. I didn't have any, you know, LLC protection or anything like that. So, um, so I actually got a call from a competing moving company, I guess they're a real moving company, I should say they're a competitor now, but, uh, they had hired me to come on uh, as like a contractor and basically pay me the same thing that I was charging people to do it on my own and didn't have to worry about all of the, um, you know, all of the nuances of, of dealing with all the customers and stuff. So, uh, worked for them for a little while, kind of learned the ropes, uh, saw that the operation they were running was, uh, you know, not much different from what I was doing. They just had a license and an insurance uh, to be able to do what they were doing. So I did some research, found out how to get all the things that I needed to get to start my own business. And when I graduated from the University of Florida, um, I put it all into motion. And uh, kind of the thing that spurred me is there's actually a two college brothers truck that pulled up to a stoplight. And I was like, wow, like that was the idea that I had, like, you know, college student movers. Uh, and I was like, man, if they can do it, like, then I need to like get going because like that, like there's a, there's a viable market here. So, uh, so I, I did some research again, got the LC together, got the insurance, got the license. Uh, and all I had at the time was a pickup truck. So I was renting U-Haul trucks. I was, I got a trailer for it. So I was using a trailer. I was doing a lot of like the labor only type things loading and unloading other people's trucks still. Uh, and we, I competed against two college brothers for a couple of summers. And my company was called Smarter Moving Solutions. Uh, to this day, that's still the LLC that we operate under. 
And uh, one day my phone rang and I answered and it was one of the owners of two college brothers. And then there were two brothers uh, in college uh, at UF. <laughs> and, um, and oh, they like, also hey. went to UF? Yeah, yeah. They, That's they cool. Went to UF. Yeah. And, and like I looked up this company for a long time. I kept their flyer on my desk just as like inspiration. I love the brand that they had built. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to trying to grow like they did. They had locations in Miami, Orlando and Tallahassee at that point in time. And I was like, wow, like this is incredible. Right. Uh, let's talk. So uh, they wanted to go and pursue some other opportunities and they just wanted to get out of it and sell it. Um, so we sat down, they told me their price and I, and I like, I was like, there's no way I can afford to buy your company. Like for what you're asking, if I even had that money, I could put it into my own company and, you know, do what you're doing. Um, so I just kind of gave them a counter offer just with what I could afford. And they're like, yeah, thanks, but no thanks. And a few weeks went by and they had emailed me and said, Hey, like, you know what? Like we really went out, like, we'll, we'll sell you this company. Uh, I was like, wow, like buying a business. I, Still don't really know what I'm doing, <laughs> uh, but um, ended up making the deal work and uh, bought two college brothers. Uh, originally, was going to try to run the two brands side by side, where my company was going to be like residential and commercial stuff, and their company was going to be moving college kids. Um, but then quickly realized that it was just um, it was it was too much to separate the brands, like different T-shirts, different trucks, different. Right. You know, marketing, everything. So it's like, all right, well, I need to pick a brand. They've been around a little bit longer. Um, and I really have admired the brand that they built. I think it's franchisable one day. And that's ultimately what I wanted to do to scale the business. Um, and they had all these locations that at, at the time I didn't realize weren't real locations. Uh, they were basically, um, they had like an ambassador in each one of these markets that was uh, not doing much. Like they, they were picking up some moves and just kind of coordinating rental trucks and stuff like that. Um, so it wasn't, it did, that part didn't really make sense. So I closed all the other locations, just focused on the Gainesville to college brothers location, decided to go all in on that brand. And, uh, and we started to grow quite a bit. Uh, my, one of my fraternity brothers and, and roommate at the time became my first manager him and I would do a lot of the moves ourselves. And then we started to hire uh, other movers. We started to get more trucks um, and, <clears throat> and, and things started to take off. At the time, we had only hired college students uh, as our movers. We thought that's what people had wanted. Um, we pretty quickly realized that that was a bad idea because college right. kids can sometimes be not very reliable. Right. Um, so uh, we started to just look for better talent, um, but we still kept like that that brand uh, to just represent the story behind you know those beginnings. Uh, and then we decided that it was time to actually expand. Like let's we have several trucks now. Let's send a couple trucks down to Tampa where we had a uh, a contact that was going to be our manager and decided to open a Tampa location. Um, And that was a whole other adventure because the way we had grown our Gainesville business um, worked in Gainesville, but in Tampa, there's so much competition. There's so much noise uh, that we struggled for like three years to like break through that noise. Uh, We weren't able to do the same kind of advertising in Tampa that we were able to do in Gainesville. Uh, The word of mouth was not catching on as quickly as it wasn't a tight knit community like Gainesville where we had a lot of contacts. Uh, so it was, it was about three years of going back and forth between Gainesville and Tampa, uh, trying to build up these two locations. Uh, and eventually we hit like a tipping point in 2018 where everything just started to click. Uh, and Tampa started to really get a lot of traction. Our uh, website started ranking on Google. And, uh, and before we knew it, we had two actually viable locations. And I still went back and forth all the time. Um, but, um, but as of now, Tampa is actually bigger than our Gainesville location. Uh, it's a much larger market. Um, we've, uh, during the summer of 2020, we moved into uh, an 11,000 square foot warehouse where we now offer storage. Uh, we have uh, secure vaults that we use in our storage warehouse right now. Uh, and we're still running the Gainesville location. That's still a very seasonal and very different market. Uh, but I have a great operations manager up there that, that's running it. He actually started in Tampa as an operations manager and moved up there. And, um, and yeah, so we're growing both locations. It's been 
uh, it's, it's been kind of a wild ride these last few years with the pandemic and everything else, but, um, but we've seen about 50% growth year over year these last three years. And, um, and now we've just broken into franchising, which was always my original uh, goal with the two college brothers brand. So uh, we're starting to uh, pursue franchising territories to sell to other aspiring entrepreneurs. Uh, so that's uh that's basically where we are today. That's so cool. Wade, that, that was seriously an amazing description of how you just kind of started to get and then to get to where you are, because a lot of people want to know that that juicy stuff in between. Right, like story. How did yeah. You get there and all that. that was, yeah. That was the, good the work behind it and everything. So thank you for sharing all of that. That's yeah, amazing. absolutely. And it's been a lot of trial and error. You know, it, right. it hasn't all been roses, uh, sunshine yeah. and roses. Um, these, you know, those, especially those those middle years there with the growth. Um, that was probably our our biggest challenge to overcome because we wanted to. We didn't want to turn away any business, so we would take on anything and everything. And so we learned a lot about. Uh, like finding our ideal customer base, you know, who, who is it that we actually want to focus on serving mm -hmm. uh, and, and figuring out how to reach those people. And I, I, um, to, I reached out to a lot of other moving company owners um, across the country and, and even Canada uh, to just try to hear what they did that worked that we could mm -hmm. try and apply in our markets. Uh, and I went to conferences, I listened to all the audiobooks and read as many books as I could and uh, really spent my 20s like really trying to learn as much as I possibly could about the industry and just business in general. Um, and, and finally, we started to figure out some things that that really started working and that that's ultimately what um, kind of started started some momentum for us. Mm -hmm. But there were definitely some days and some months even where didn't know if we were going to live to see another month or another moving season. And uh, we yeah. were able to fortunately make it all work. I'm sure. I mean, your drive from like being in college and wanting to start your own company and putting the Craigslist ads out, out there, I think is awesome because I think so many college students would just, you know, get the easiest job that they can get and, and, you know, go along that way. But you really like hustled and you wanted to do something where you could, you know, do better and be better. And I love that. What? Yeah what has been like the, the if they, if you could choose like one main thing that you've learned over the years or a mistake that you made or something like that that you would pass on to someone else tr going through the same struggles what would you tell them yeah i mean just to to be persistent and to just find a way to keep going like just like cuz there were there were times where like i think a lot of people probably would have given up um, but, but the thing is like, if you just keep going, eventually you get a break, eventually you throw something against the wall that sticks. And that I, I think is probably the biggest quality that separates, um, uh, long-term entrepreneurs from people who just want to go off and start their own business because most businesses fail, as you probably know, within the first couple of years. And, and there's different statistics on that, but I've heard it's like 80 or 90 percent. Uh, don't make it to like year five or something like that. So, um, you know, and, and, and a lot of times like it's, um, you know, very reasonable reasons they have to they have to cut their losses and back out. Uh, I was in a position where I was single. I didn't have a family to take care of. I didn't have a, you know, kids and, and that sort of a thing. So I could afford to work a lot of those long days uh, in my twenties and miss a lot of the trips that my friends were taking. I didn't travel, you know, around the world like a lot of uh, a lot of people I knew where I didn't, I didn't get to go out and go to all the parties and all the happy hours and stuff like that. I would have to sacrifice a lot. Uh, and that's, that's a tough thing to do in your early twenties, uh, especially in a college town and especially in a big city uh, where there's a lot of distractions and, and not to say that I, you know, was a monk and just, you know, didn't do anything fun, but, uh, but it, I did make a lot of sacrifices and just persisted. So I think that's the, that's really the key to anybody who wants to make it. Um, and I was fortunate enough too when I was first starting out to learn how to bootstrap it. So I didn't have, you know, any access to credit lines or loans or any, you know, any money that, you know, I could, I, I could um, uh, afford to just, you know, put out there in the beginning, which is, I think, a good thing because it forced me to like do things as efficient as possible. Uh, and then ultimately uh, get some momentum doing it the right way from the beginning instead of just throw, you know, a ton of money at something that, you know, all of a sudden doesn't work. And then what do you do? So and then you're in debt. So, um, you know, that was um, 
Yeah. I mean, that, that was probably one of the best things I, I learned is just how to hustle. That's actually one of our company core values is hustle. Uh, nice. Whether it's, you know, from a marketing standpoint, whether it's the movers hustling to and from the trucks, uh, whether it's just, you know, trying to pick up as many opportunities as we can and, and be efficient with those opportunities and go the extra mile. Um, I, I do value that a lot because that is ultimately what, what got me to where we are right now. Nice. I love it. Have you, you mentioned that Tampa has a lot of uh, competition and I'm sure a lot of big cities do. What sets two college brothers apart than all the other moving and storage companies? Yeah, I, I would say our culture is a big piece of that. Um, it, it, over the years, we've had to make a lot of really difficult decisions about people that just didn't fit our culture. And I've learned a lot of those lessons the hard way. Uh, it's, you know, it, that that's I think there's a quote that somebody said I don't know who said it but um, that that uh, culture eats strategy for for breakfast or lunch. Um, it <clears throat> if you can get everybody on on board with something that uh, they believe in and they're willing to make some sacrifices with you and everybody's on the same page and going in the same direction, uh, you can you do a lot of really cool things. Um, you know, we've got uh, our we you know our all of our guys are background checked. Their uh, our drivers are drug tested. Uh, we put them through a lot of training and we have a lot of defined processes that every single person that steps into a role uh, has to complete and then get tested on um, and follow those processes and those recipes uh, in order to work for us. And uh, if they don't fit that culture of, of being willing to follow that recipe or if they don't fit the culture of being able to work with other people, then uh, they don't last a long time. Um, the moving industry has a has kind of a uh, a rough reputation. There's a lot of um, road players and there historically has been. It's, it's becoming less and less now with uh, all of the online, you know, transparency that businesses can offer and the Google reviews and stuff like that. Um, but that's something that we've, we've really focused on is, is creating a raving fan on every single move, because ultimately I think that is the best marketing. Uh, you know, we can do billboards or we could do, you know, TV commercials or radio or, you know, whatever, but ultimately you get those customers one time. If you don't do a good job for them, they're going to either go out and trash you or they're not going to use you again. And sometimes it's just a satisfied customer is, is the worst thing that you can have um, because they're, they're not going to tell anybody about you. They're going to forget about you. If you mm -hmm. have a raving fan customer, they want to tell everybody about you. Right. Uh, if you have an upset customer, they're going to tell everybody not to go with you. So, um, so I'd say just the, just hiring a higher caliber person, our, our, our pay for movers is, is some of the highest in the area. Um, and then we try to get the right people on board that are willing to, to follow the vision and, and the, the processes that we've laid out in order to provide a consistent moving experience for everybody. Um, in, a, in an industry with a low barrier to entry uh, that, that a lot of times doesn't have all those, those elements uh, for just lack of experience or lack of talent, um, you know, that's something that, uh, that we really pride ourselves on. Yeah, that's huge. Mm -hmm. I agree. Is there a business that you say no to now? Like, have you learned to say no to certain things or do you need to or... Yeah, definitely. So early on, we were doing all kinds of like small deliveries and little pickups. And like there were people that would haggle with us over the price. Um, you know, we say no to a lot of that stuff. Uh, it's uh, we're, we know who our target customer is. Uh, and that's what we want to fill our schedule with. Uh, during the slower times of the year, usually like January, February, uh, we get a little bit more aggressive. But um, I mean, there's moving there's something there's something different every single day in terms of like the type of person that you're walking into their home of. i mean we've walked into homes of hoarders we've walked into uh homes of um just very strange people with strange things um you know. and ultimately we try to price ourselves out of some of those situations um, but uh, also just, you know, really sell the service that we're providing because a lot of times that's uh, going to be a more uh, cost effective thing for a person to pay a little bit extra upfront for a service uh, instead of half, instead of pay less. And then all of a sudden their stuff gets damaged or doesn't show up or it goes missing or the movers don't show up and they have to now run a U-Haul and do it themselves. Uh, you know, that, that's, ideally who we're, who we're looking to get. And, and we do say no all the time. And once we're booked up, like we're booked up and we're not trying to squeeze every single person in just, just for the sake of a dollar. I mean, we want to make sure that the moves are done the right way. Uh, and that uh, at the end of the day, 
um, our ideal customers are telling their friends who are probably also our ideal customers. Right. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Definitely. Yeah. Love that. Tell us about franchising. Have you started any, have you opened any franchises yet? And is that your plan? Do you have like a timeline on it? Yeah. So we just started the franchising process at the end of 2021. Uh, basically in order to franchise, you have to have what's called a franchise disclosure document, which is uh, a few hundred pages of uh, legal paperwork that also outlines the um, uh, expectations for a prospective franchisee. It outlines a lot of the systems and processes uh, that, that somebody would be signing up for. And that's basically the, the document that is what allows you to get into selling a franchise. So it's kind of like a contract, but it's also, uh, it lays out all of the groundwork and all of the stipulations for somebody who wants to come in and basically go into business for themselves, but not by themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are currently looking to sell franchise territories. We're focusing on Florida. Uh, if an uh, opportunity opens up in another state, we're certainly open to it, um, but we would love to get a franchise territory in St. Pete, Sarasota, so to Orlando, Jacksonville, Ocala, and the villages, Naples, uh, to start off with somewhere that we could get in a car uh, or I could get in a car and, and drive to that day and check in on things, uh, coach and mentor the prospective business owner and uh, something that where they basically just have to follow the same recipe that we've found that works through a lot of that trial and error. Um, if I knew what I knew now, 10 years ago, we would have uh, grown a lot faster and uh, things would have been a lot more accelerated. Everything from how to hire people, what you're looking for, what type of uh, qualifications they need, how to train them, uh, what marketing works, what gets the phone to ring, um, how do you sell the service that we're providing, and then how do we execute that service to make sure that we have a happy customer at the end of the day. Um, and, and, and then so that it also stays profitable, because by taking on some of the uh, non-ideal clients, you know, that it may look really good up front, um, but it, it, you may lose money on a situation like that. We, in 2017, took on a project that was over, it was a six figure project. And my eyes like lit up at the dollar signs and everything, but it wasn't our ideal customer and it almost put us out of business. Wow. Um, so, so having some mentorship and some guidance um, and a recipe to follow um, is, is uh, tremendously valuable. And then obviously leveraging a brand as the brand grows, uh, so does the individual market that somebody may own a, a territory in. So um, that's what we're looking at, per, at pursuing right now. Um, so, um, you know, obviously a franchisee has to be qualified uh, to, um, to, to run the business, but, um, but it's uh, something that we want to be able to um, teach people how to, again, uh, grow business and, and, and not have to be uh, by themselves. Cause sometimes it's lonely at the top, especially for entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. right. right. Yeah. Which is makes sense that you're trying to do it more locally. Right. So you can drive to them. Exactly. I love, I love franchising. That's so, I feel like so sexy right now. Right. Because a lot of people, like you said, they want to, they want to be a business owner, but they don't know how to get started or they don't know what they're passionate about, where they can try to make it make money for them. So this is a great idea because you're essentially getting a toolkit on how to, you know, open this business up and you get weighed. That's amazing. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And five, 10 years from now, I'd love to be in a position where, you know, we're basically mentoring or I'm coaching, mentoring these other business owners to success uh, basically teaching them everything that I've learned along the way and I'm continuing to learn along the way um, and then ultimately create a community of, uh, of those business owners that are all following a similar model uh, that we can basically mastermind together in. Mm -hmm. Well, I definitely think that you're going to do it, you know, before right. we even know it. So right? it was like you, it was like you manifested the two call, like the, right. the whole thing, right? You, you had their flyer on your desk as like a, representation of what you wanted and you actually got that company. That was, that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, there's definitely something there too. Uh, you know, I've read the book, the secret and the law of attraction and, and, uh, um, uh, uh, Napoleon Hill, I think it, it is, um, think and grow rich. That's the one I'm thinking of, uh, you know, all those, all those are great books to, uh, to kind of do that manifestation exercises because, uh, you know, whether or not you believe in the the invisible strings in the universe or whatever, I think 
if you put something like that in your head, you subconsciously gravitate towards the, right. the doors that, that'll open to get you to what, what you ultimately want to achieve. Wade, since you started talking about books, what's another book that you love that you read that helped you on your journey? Yeah, I mean, there's been so many of them, um, but I, I, I'm a big Grant Cardone fan. Um, if you're familiar with the 10X rule, that was kind of his big one, but he's written several others. Um, you know, and he's kind of the epitome of like that hustle mentality, mm -hmm. uh, if you've read any of his things. Uh, so I like to follow him. Uh, you know, Think and Grow Rich, obviously there's the classics, uh, the, the Laws of Success, also by Napoleon Hill. Uh, there's just so, there, I mean, but there's so many, I mean, I, I listen to audible. I live in St. Pete, our office is in Tampa. So I get about an hour a day of, uh, of audio book listening time and, and podcasts too are always really good. And then I'm always trying to read a, uh, another kind of book, um, you know, on the side, uh, John Maxwell is great for, uh, leadership books. So, um, yeah, no, I mean, and then, I mean, it's really depending on what kind of a, what, what department you're looking to focus on, whether it's right. leadership, whether it's training culture, uh, marketing, um, just something motivational. I mean, there's, there's so many different ones, uh, in each of those categories, but, um, I think just, uh, just constantly surrounding yourself with, with that, um, that knowledge and that, uh, that inspiration is, is really important for any entrepreneur. Yes. And one last thing, cause I don't want to go by without talking about this is, you created a podcast as well, geared towards moving companies, right? Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about it. And what is it called? Yeah. So my podcast is called the Grow Your Moving Company podcast. Um, it's, you know, obviously very niche, very industry specific. Um, and that basically came about, I don't know, probably 2016 or 2017. I was just kind of in a, in a rut. I was, I, we kind of hit a wall, especially like trying to grow our Tampa business. Um, you know, we had that big project I mentioned earlier that kind of set us back a few steps. Um, and I, I started picking up the phone and just calling other moving company owners and learning, you know, what, what do you do that works? And, uh, and everybody was so, so open to just sharing and, and nothing like that existed geared towards moving company owners, uh, on online or in the podcast world. I mean, all of the training materials were super outdated from like the eighties and the nineties. And they were these really poorly done uh, instructional videos. And there wasn't anything really relevant to like the modern day, like internet, you know, era <clears throat> moving company owner. Uh, and a lot of these companies uh, had either been around for a long time and they, uh, they knew exactly what worked and they had very similar stories uh, or they had started a few years prior and they had stumbled onto some kind of a success. I would find them just cruising through Yelp or Google, just trying to see what other companies were doing around the country and just picking up the phone and, and calling them or sending them an email if I could find an email address for the owners. Uh, and I was having these really valuable conversations with people. And uh, I was like, this needs to be recorded. Like this information is nowhere else to be found. Uh, so, and there was no other podcasts geared towards moving companies at that time. So uh, I started just asking people like, hey, can I record this? I want to do a podcast. Uh, where, uh, you know, because I think that's that's needed in our industry and it ultimately will lift up everybody in our industry if if everybody can have access to this and that that kind of like shady mentality where people are hesitant to hire movers will hopefully start to go away if there's enough good companies out there that are doing the right things and uh, not just going out there to make a quick buck. And, and so that's basically what I did. And uh, it was funny because I would start, you know, I started to uh, discover like moving conferences and uh, I discovered like a Facebook group for moving company owners. And I just became known as like the podcast guy. And I would, I would oh. go out to those and, uh, you know, recruit people to talk to, but also, um, you know, people started to want to talk to me. And uh, yeah, it's been, that's been a lot of fun. It's been super helpful for me because I learned something new on every single podcast. Right. It's mm -hmm. opened up a lot of doors with um, getting the best vendors in the industry for whether it's our, our, our customer relationship management software. Uh, we work really closely with them. It, it, people that, uh, you know, work on our website, like it's that, that are specifically for moving companies. Like it's all been, I've all met them through the, the network that I've built from doing the podcast. And um, that's, it, it's just been a lot of fun. Like I said, there's business advice, you know, general business advice in there that anybody could apply, but it's really geared towards the 
moving company owner who's either just starting out or just looking for some inspiration. Uh, we talk about everybody's personal story and it's amazing how similar a lot of our stories are. People that are in a tough spot and they just need work and they start moving furniture and then all of a sudden they, they turn it into a, a big business and just hearing uh, what they did to get there. And um, yeah, it's been, it's been great. And uh, it's opened up a lot of really cool doors for me. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, congratulations on your success and good luck with everything. I know that you will be extremely successful, you know, with your business and with everything in the future. So I'm excited to see your journey. Thank you for coming on our podcast and sharing your story. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. And until next time, live bold and boss up.